one day HDB asked us to, to move out of the house so that we can rent out the place to pay the interest that we owe HDB. I was homeless at that time. With that, it ignites my dream of owning properties. Usually when people want to buy properties, they will be fearful, they will be doubtful whether uh, can it be rent, rented out or uh, will there be future appreciation. I never really consider much and I just buy by faith. This gotta be real big I gotta make it just for my kids And for their kids, just kids That's wealth years and years Promise my brother soon as he out of finish this bid We finna do it bigger than anybody ever did The odds is real big Job that's real big Satan trying a little, my God is real big Stayed up on the grind on the cards is real big I gotta do it big The only way that I can live Welcome to Property Lim Brothers' brand new series where we will have a chat with Singapore property investor to hear their stories and learn about their investment journey to see how they got started as well as investing strategies for the future. This is the Pinnacle Investor Series, inspiring the next generation for property investments. Today we are speaking with Eric Chu, the founder of Credit Savvy. His company does property consultation programs for consumers and he has sold and invested more than 10 different properties in his investment journey. Join us today as we speak with him and I think it's going to be an exciting episode. Let's go. My name is Eric Chiu. I just turned 37. I started investing since 2010. I also own Credit Savvy, which is a property consultation firm. We offer property investment program to teach people using the right tools to find undervalued properties and also to teach them the risk and benefit of owning properties as well. We also do mortgage works by finding the lowest interest rate for our clients. Sometimes people think that to start investing in properties, you need to come from a well-to-do background. However, in Eric's case, this is not so. My parents was doing very well in business. They are in the signage business. One day things got bad. They divorced when I was in secondary school. So I continued to stay with my mother and my siblings and my 90-year-old granny. Subsequent years, my mom got breast cancer and sadly she passed away when I was 18. They didn't buy insurance for the HDB flat. When she passed on, no one pays for the money installment for the flat. HDB is very nice for us to continue to stay but one day HDB asked us to, to move out of the house so that we can rent out the place to pay the interest that we owe HDB so I was homeless at that time me and my younger sister and my 90 year old granny went from places to places to stay subsequently my sister got married and she's so nice to let us stay in her matrimonial home from that day onwards we finally got a home to stay so after that I started working in the bank my job is to provide loans for SME clients and from there I'm very blessed to mix with bosses and they taught me about the twin engine they taught me how to invest in properties and also do well in businesses with that it ignites my dream of owning properties so that made me set up my company Credit Savvy in my first year of business I'm very lucky I make profits with that money I started to invest in my first property currently I own seven properties the first one is my home here which is a freehold semi-D in Bukit Timah second property which I just bought recently I am rebuilding it into a bungalow which is Bukit Timah as well and my third property is an office I'm using it for my own use at International Plaza my fourth property is an, another office at Peninsula Plaza which is currently tenanted to a law firm my fifth property is Bishan Exchange in Jurong East currently tenanted to a HR firm and my sixth property is an office at Parkway Centre which is currently tenanted to an enrichment centre lastly is a 3 bedroom condo in KL Sometimes getting started in real estate investing also means meeting the right people the right mentors to learn from so that you have a good kickstart to your journey Eric, when and how do you get started in property investing? I started investing in properties in 2010. At that time, it was my ex-boss who recommended this property to me. I knew that she is still in touch with her mentor, which is a good class bungalow investor. At that time, I remember my ex-boss already owned about 6-7 local properties. So she recommended me this property to buy together with her. By faith and to see that she has good mentors, I followed her footsteps. How old were you back then? I was 26. What was your mindset? Actually, at that point of time, I didn't have any plans buying property. In my career, actually, I have a lot of business owners who already own multiple properties. It's very common to hear my clients owning 10 to 40 residential properties. So to me, buying my first one is... Okay, because usually when people want to buy properties, they will be fearful, they will be doubtful whether uh, can it be rent rented out or uh, will there be future appreciation. I, I never really consider much and I just 
buy by faith. Looking back at hindsight is having that mentor mm. very important. I think everyone should have a mentor. Mm. You need someone who is the right mindset to like give you a nudge like, hey, let's do it together. Mm. And you need someone to lead you to see things that you can't see. We don't know things that we don't know. I'm very glad to have a mentor that encouraged me to buy my first property. That actually kickstart my passion to buy properties and started to buy on my own. It gave me a lot of confidence to want to get the next right one then subsequently when I got the second one it gives me even more confidence to want to do something bigger so having a mentor is very important if you want to have a successful portfolio an investment in properties can also be other types of real estate other than residential properties as long as the numbers and analysis make sense now in Eric's case he also has a commercial property portfolio let's hear from him Right, so Eric, I noticed from your investment journey, you have started investing in some industrial and commercial property. What was your, your investment thoughts? I bought my residential property first. In order to buy your second property, you need to pay ABSD. So I think it's very unwise for investors or even Singaporeans to pay ABSD in order to get your second property. The only way to get your second or even third is only to explore industrial and commercial properties. I went into industrial. Having the thoughts of rental you is a very good way to collect cash flow. However, after invested into three industrial properties, the capital gains is really bad. Although rental is good, the down payment that I put in don't really make a lot. It's not working hard for me. A lot of people do not know that industrial properties, because the leasehold is short, it is going into like depreciation mode. Once it goes to zero, your value becomes zero. On one hand, you are getting very good rental. On the other hand, it is depreciative. So plus minus, you still make, but it don't add up to your investment objective of making a good lump sum over a uh, number of good years. A lot of people told me that, oh, industrial property, you can buy and make money in three years. I don't think so. I think it's a longer play. My investment direction is more towards short term. So industrial is not really, you need to really hold very, very long. Right. When do you exit these three properties? I bought in 2013. I managed to sell three years later. Mm. One, I only managed to get it out like six years later. I still have faith. So I thought, why not go into commercial properties? Commercial and residential, they're about the same type. If you buy in the right area, you have a appreciation value. Commercial property is also one of the type that you do not need to pay seller stamp duty. So there's no holding period. It's the easiest way, lower entry. Commercial properties and industrial properties, there's a vast difference. Do not mix that up. Industrial property is for people who like cash flow. Commercial properties, they have the appreciation value. Based on your perspective, mm. is you advise people that are running their own business perhaps. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. I think that's a wise way to get. Having your own space is good. So it's so much cheaper for you to pay your installment rather to pay your rental. But based on investment perspective, office will be a better vehicle in your perspective. Yes. So commercial properties is something that you can explore if you want to expand your portfolio. And for those who want to expand your portfolio and do not want to pay ABSD, I think commercial properties is the way to go. Now making sense of the properties to invest in is very important because not just following the crowd but to have a very clear understanding on the rationale of your investment is the key principle in real estate investing. Okay, so Eric, what are your thoughts on going into office, commercial, being freehold or uh, triple nine or 99? A lot of people thought freehold is the best, freehold is the best. Mm. But it's not really true. Overall characteristic of a 99 years leasehold, they go up faster, they also go down faster. For freehold, they go up slower, but they also go down slower. And because my plan is to make money for appreciation in short term, so 99 years is one of the way to go because their characteristic in the first place they go up faster you'll be surprised most of the time 99 may make even more than freehold so why this four particular properties for uh, international plaza is for my own use very central and a lot of people thought that i bought for on block purpose actually i want to save on rent for the past seven years before i get my own office my rent per year is about hundred thousand i calculated if i can get my own office i pay installment with the mcst if the interest rate is so low plus it's my own office at times if i don't use it i'll just rent it out as like dual key so i'm technically using my office for free it's not to make money it's, it's actually for saving rental shenton house is for a few purpose like on block don't went through but never mind for parkway center we all know that parkway center is a place where there's a lot of uh, enrichment classes e enrichment classes correct and we all know that education is an evergreen industry mm. the other thing is the upcoming mrt station which is a marine parade mrt station so i'm waiting for the upside lah. peninsula plaza is there's this recent person who bought almost entire floor, 2,500 per square feet. We all understand that the bigger size, the per square feet should be lower. cheaper. Mm. If you can get something smaller at the same per square feet, it's considered very good. Mm. 
So it's like, wow, this is undervalued by a lot leh. That time I'm really like very tight, but it's really so undervalued. Like invested in yeah, it. yeah. So okay. I was like, ah, yeah, never mind, I just buy, I just buy. So I took like one third shares. With your students? Yeah, with wow, my students. Okay. The overall view about commercial properties is, especially for people who want to buy now, like 2021, COVID situation, a lot mm. of people think that most people work from home. And if you don't want to put in risk to buy offices, don't come into commercial properties. For, for us who already bought last time, we're just holding on. Commercial properties, the tenant profile mm. is a lot better than industrial tenants profile. Mm. That's a good thing, uh, all the tenants still there. Location, location, location. Now, when it comes to investing in residential properties, let's hear from Eric on what are some of the tips and strategies that he has for our audience. And so, Eric, when we talk about residential properties, mm. what are some of your favorite districts? Actually, I don't have a certain district that I always invest in. So, I usually look at the upsides of that area. Simple things like is there upcoming MRT station? Is there a potential shopping mall that is going to build there? What kind of upside will there be in the next three years? That's for Knows. For Lander, most of the time I will look at prime district like 9, 10, 11. The upside is always the school. Singapore is like an uh, education hub. Most importantly, the lender must be real property. That is the reason why lender property prices have been going up. Many do not know that this whole lender property is depreciating. Never buy 99 years if you can. If you can't afford 99 years leasehold lender, you can always go for a leasehold condo instead. I don't like cluster. I don't like leasehold. The probability of you losing money is very high. I look at the past transaction history. Buyers who bought at the launch, the first person who sold, they lost one million. Eh. Their maintenance fee can go as high as like $1,000 per month. So it's like, why not buy your own lender and pay your installment and don't pay any maintenance fee? So that's why, for that reason, I will not advise people to go into 99 lender, that's for sure. Uh, cluster housing as well. How about for families, they are entering into the landed space mm. and they have something around the 3 mil mark. Okay, I, I, did, I did research on landed and the other tip is if you have 3 million, I do not know whether you can still get a land which is like 2 million. If you have the luxury of time to rebuild it, you can wait for 2 years, mm. you will make the most money out of it. Mm. So I call this like you are creating value from your property and that's how you create your own profit. Okay, so if someone is looking to invest in a private residential for pure investment purpose what are your top three districts uh, actually, i actually have a few areas the first area is woodley area woodley is previously a cemetery but to me cemetery is a prosperous area like Kishan <laughs> last time was a cemetery there is like a lot of videos coming up i call them the million dollars hdb flats the condos over there 1.5 1.6 i think you can achieve a, even a three bedroom or even a four bedroom property there and the properties there is like less than 10 years old it's City Fringe. If you take the MRT to town, it's like 8-9 minutes. There's an aircon bus interchange. There's a shopping mall there. But I think the hot spot is Bidadari for Northeast people. If your budget is lower, I think you can go further down to Wangkok. Wangkok MRT station, small like shopping retail mall there. For resale properties, very importantly to see upcoming developments so that you can see your property appreciate. If you buy a resale property with no upside or no future developments, you won't make your money in 3-4 years. So again, I don't like to project 10 years because whatever you buy, you will make money. So I like to challenge myself by which, which area will give me the best return in the, in the shortest time. How about residential inside the CBD? What's your view? It's a total no. Okay, but, but I have a philosophy. You will be shocked that mass market condos makes a lot more than dreamy condos because most of Singaporeans we all stay in HDB flats. When we talk about HDB upgraders, they will always upgrade to a place near where they stay, comfort zone. So if you buy a condo in mass market, it's very e easy to exit to HDB upgraders. So when you talk about CBD condos, the tip here to everyone is when they sell, they don't buy back CBD condos. It's very difficult to exit. If you want to be successful in property investing, you need to learn how to exit. Uh, will there be a pool of buyers to buy from you? Let's hope ABSD will leave for foreigners and foreigners will buy it because foreigners love to buy CBD. What are your viewpoints for penthouses and ground floors? My advice is try not to get something like uh, with too many open terraces like penthouses because the value for the open terraces it only worth half the per square feet of the usable size. But again, for people who like to stay, you like the first floor environment, you can walk out to the swimming pool, then of course you can get it. It will be easy if you split investment value and own stay value out because it is not as easy to exit. When people ask me, should I buy this for investment or for own stay? I'll tend to tell them to 
don't put two together. The very easy to exit types are usually the very common one, the two bedroom, the, the typical. three bedrooms. The typical layout whereby you have no law, don't need to climb up, climb down type. Very common and popular types of properties that people will want to buy and exit. It's easy to exit. Will you go for small size properties now? If let's say your budget is really very tight, if let's say you have a choice to go for one bedroom near MRT or two bedroom with no MRT, I think right now times have changed. The two bedroom with no MRT may make more than the one bedroom. To buy properties in Singapore, you can only buy one each to avoid the ABSD for the second property. Try to maximize by buying the best that you can afford under your name. Mm. If you really can't and you can only get one beta, it's better for you to start than you don't do anything. I don't advise people to keep on playing the same game whereby you buy one million, you make 200. Three years later, you buy again at one million. Try to maximize the gains by getting something where we should make like 120, 150, 250, 400 in every three, four years. But before that, you need to go through the good experience of making your first profit from your first one. Then after that, you just model it. Alright, so Eric, do you have plans to invest in more properties in the near future? Hey, sure, definitely. Because I think properties has been very good to me for the past few years. The properties I, I went in actually make very good in capital appreciation. Mm. Especially in Singapore, I think most people make their first part of gold through buying their right properties like brand new flats, brand new EC, brand new condos. So I think properties is still one of the best investment that you should go into. What do you think are some of the asset types in the property category that you think Singaporeans can, can focus on? My advice for people who are like working class, the best investment you should go for, I think you should stick to residential properties. I see that there's a lot of opportunities coming up. New launch and the resale market, the price gap is getting bigger and bigger. So resale condos are also one of the good investment properties that you can enter as well. For Officers try not to enter because I think you need a higher risk taking appetite in order to stomach the up and downs. If you want to buy, the entry level is high. At times, if you make, you make good money, but when the market comes down, you actually lose quite a lot. For people who are using industrial properties to do businesses, I think it's good for you to get one on your own. It's good to pay your own installment rather than you pay renter. What do you think will be the kind of right perspective to decide whether should I go for new launch or resale? I think there's always this debate whether hey, uh, should I go for resale or should I go for brand new for myself because I started from nothing. My objective is to make as much of money as possible. Survival mode. So when it comes to investment, new launch is a good way to make your first part of gold. But I think right now, times have changed. You need to understand the market rate of how much the developer is launching the price at. It's unlike people who buy properties last time. People who buy properties last time they anyhow buy and they anyhow make money. Mm. But I think right now times have changed. You need to really educate yourself whether the developer bought the land at a good price, are they selling at a good launch price? Is there still margin or potential for your capital appreciation? So these are the, some of the factors that you need to look into, especially into location, uh, the price point, the size. And because right now due to uh, cooling measures, everyone can only own one. Since you can only own one to prevent to pay ABSD for the second property, your option is a very precious one. And for resale properties, the upside is not as high as new launch unless you find very good undervalued properties. Example scenario, if the current market price is transacted like 1.5 million for a two-bedroom, for example, you can get it like 1.35, 1.38, 120 to 150k undervalue. So which means that you already make some paper gain. If the property don't go up in the next three, four years, you can still sell at 1.5 million. So either undervalued properties or properties that has future up coming developments in around that area so that you have a future appreciation for your property. How about um, any advice for Singaporeans when they do this first investment, mm. what is the right mindset to plan for exit? The kind of time frame that we should plan forward? Okay, my way of investing is I look at short term. Of course, I think many people when they go into properties, they look at a time frame of like 10 years, 15 years. Whatever properties you buy like 10 years ago, you definitely make some money either through some capital appreciation or through your rental income that you have collected over the years. What challenged me is to find properties that give you the highest capital appreciation in the shortest time. Okay, my short term is about three, four years. And since 
the holding period for residential properties like three years before you can sell to avoid the SSD. I'll look at areas whereby is there new MRT station coming up in the next three years and not like, oh, there will be this MRT station coming up in 10 years later. If we can learn to find properties that can give us high capital appreciation in three, four years, you can also hold on to your 10 year longer terms because you already make your money in your three, four years. Mm. So my strategy is always to look at short terms. So I will go like this area, once I make money from this area, I'll jump to the next area. So I'll always look at short term and not so much on long term. If you have standby funds that is ready for two and a half million dollar property, what is the type of residential property you go for? Coming from a perspective that this is the only property that you can own. with Only property, and, so and I'm you, going to stay. You want inside. to stay plus the investment engine kind of factor. 2.5. And you only got one, one shot. Okay, for, oh, okay, talking about families. Mm. Uh, okay, let's look at three bedrooms. Three bedrooms are quite versatile. You can invest, you can stay, you can have a family. I think you do not need 2.5 million. 1.6 to 2 is a very good range. But I think my advice, you should just go for a rather new condo, maybe less than 10 years old, for higher appreciation. Because freehold tends to increase, but slower. 99 years lease tends to increase faster. And we are here to make money. So uh, leasehold properties are still okay to enter for three bedroom, but you just need about 1.7 to 2 million. Any final advice for, for our audience before we wrap up today's session? My advice for people who are like maybe first timer, it's good that you can start off with a brand new BTO. I think most people make very good money from BTO and after your MOP, you can upgrade to a private property, a condo or even landed property. For people who have already invested in their first property, it's good that you should explore getting your second property for investment. Because I think right now in today's market, in today's era, is having one property is not enough. So I think having two is better so that you have one for own stay for a longer term and the other short term uh, investment whereby you can sell and buy, you make good profits, you can use the profits to fully pay your own stay property faster. Again, times have changed. In order to go into getting your right properties is to really get yourself educated. Yeah, you need to learn how to buy the right property. La. So Eric, thank yep. you for your time. You're hey, welcome, and, thank uh, you. Melvin. And also thank you for appearing on our Pinnacle Investor Series. I think it's great hearing your story, how you got started plus your investment journey and also uh, what is to come for, for the next uh, couple of years in terms mm. of property investment. And, I think our next generation can learn so much. Property is always a, a very exciting journey. True. Thanks, thanks for all your sharing today. Yeah, no it's, it's a pleasure and uh, honor to have you on our show. Okay. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. And all the best for your property investment journey, your hey, business you. and family. Hey, thank all you. Right. Thank you, Melvin. Okay. Thank you. Take care. We hope you enjoyed this Pinnacle Investor Series. Have a question on property investment or you would like to be featured yourself, do contact our team down below in the description. Once again, I'm Jessly from Property Lim Brothers, Pinnacle Investor Series, inspiring the next generation on property investment.